for a first hole, for drilling a first hole on a grassroots program. That was astounding, actually. We, we really got jazzed about that. Hole number one, SP1, over 100 meters of 0.09 grams per ton, almost breaking a tenth of a gram. That actually is a discovery hole. And for, for a grassroots program, that would constitute a discovery hole pretty much by any one standards. And it's telling you that you're getting close to something that could be large. Then we put the other holes around and you could see this blanket is big. So we've got a, a large area out there with this blanket-like low-grade mass. It's within the right type of volcanic sequence related to the right type of intrusion. So when you compare it back to Atlanta, we've got the right geological environment. Yeah, Silver Park West is actually really interesting. The Silver Park Historic Mine is a high-grade silver mine located about two kilometers west of the resource. Now, this was mined in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and it essentially was low-hanging fruit for high-grade silver. They mined it out both open pit and underground, but it's very small scale. Come later, we have historical exploration where they do a handful of drill holes on the mine itself to try to see if that mineralization goes to depth. Unfortunately, these drill holes aren't very deep. They only go about 50 meters at most. And so they assumed that it was thin skin mineralization or super gene mineralization and kind of wrote it off as such. Now, what's exciting is the drill holes that we've drilled in phase three have discovered that we actually have um, conformity with mineralization on the periphery of this mine. It's not the mine itself that's necessarily what we're going after, it's on the periphery. And that brings up another point is that a lot of people also wrote this off as just being a high silver, low gold situation. But if we're gonna use a proxy like we've been talking with the Atlanta resource, we do have a lot of holes on the periphery of the resource that are high silver, low gold. And if we have an unconformity like we do, there's a good question to be had. Is this just showing the periphery of another deposit around Silver Park? The resource zone starts at the Atlanta East Fault, and then you're getting progressive down drop faults as you head towards the wild west zone way out on the west side and we're seeing that same down drop pattern now in our silver park west zone that we're drilling on right now so structurally we have an analog for the main deposit of atlanta which is the atlanta mine fault zone with the west atlanta graben and the wild west zone we see that west of silver park we also have it closely associated with what looks to be a rhyolitic plume that's both reflected on surface, the drilling that we've drilled, as well as the CSAMT. So we're getting multiple confirmations that this intrusive is there. And in this intrusive, we get low, broad disseminated mineralization. I mean, gold that stretches quite a distance, 600 meters by 700 meters and possibly further. I mean, it's very broad blanket. To be able to now infill these areas where there is no road access, areas that have never been drilled. In fact, areas that were historically not even sampled. We've taken the first samples. So this is truly a virgin area. What we've actually found is some of the highest grade rock samples on the property. And so with that, we've found 4.58 gram per ton samples in Silver Park West. We have high grade rock samples going from one to two plus grams per ton gold, even at the Southern margins of the Silver Park East target. Clearly, these high-grade rock samples are coming from somewhere, and it's our job to investigate where are they coming from. We just finished a vertical hole that's in between 1 and 10, and we found out we've got a hell of a fault in there somewhere, which has down-dropped the areas. That gave us our first inkling right there that, hey, we may have a West Atlanta Graben type situation going on here. When you have an opportunity to learn about a deposit from the ground up, like we have here in Atlanta, then it gives you ideas of what to be looking for elsewhere in places where people possibly have not looked at it this way before. Now, where it gets really interesting is this is on the boundary of what we call the Ryan Springs caldera. Now, this is a volcanic eruption that happened after the fact of Atlanta. And we know that these volcanic rocks are unmineralized. 
what they've effectively done is covered a lot of the boundary of both the southern portion of the east Silver Park target, as well as the south and west portions of the west Silver Park target. We have plumbing, we have structure, but we're right next to volcanic cover that essentially gives no signature at surface and could potentially cover a target that is unknown to any exploration. And we have soil anomalies and rock chip anomalies at surface that go right up to that boundary that are anomalous in arsenic, molybdenum, antimony, gold, silver. You know, we have rock chip samples right up to that boundary that run 4.58 grams per ton. And then it just goes away. It stops. It's a sharp delineation. What this tells us is this is a, a potential for a blind target. The spacing on our holes is quite wide. You're talking hundreds of meters between our holes. So you can put a lot in between these holes in there in terms of potential deposits. So now we have to tighten up our drill patterns and look for the source for this large low-grade blanket. But this also requires going into areas that have never been drilled before. So there's no roads. Once we get that permitted, we'll be able to put in a pattern to the west of the old Silver Park mine to see if we can't nail down something that looks like it might be a structural analog of the West Atlanta Graben, which is the main gold body within the Atlanta Resource Zone. So that's why we're putting a lot of emphasis and time and effort into getting into the West target area to uh, see if we can't come up with another West Atlanta Graben type deposit.